morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Greater St. James AME Church School. We are delighted that you're taking some time out of your day to share with us. Before we begin, let us pray. Father, we thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for another opportunity to study your word. Lord, we ask you to bless us and help us to live a life so that we can see you in heaven some sweet day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our lesson today is entitled, Rejoicing in Heaven. Rejoicing in Heaven. Our lesson scripture can be found in Revelations 19, and our focus scripture is Revelation 19, chapter 19, verses one through eight. The key verse, let us remember and exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready revelation chapter 19 verse 7. i'm going to read the king james version of our focus scripture please find your bibles and read along and after these things i heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he has judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his saints, and ye shall fear him both great and small. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of the mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted and she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints now when you look at revelation this is the future this is the future of hope where the universal church is going to unite with our bridegroom in heaven. Now you will know that Jesus Christ is our bridegroom and our lesson is capturing what is going to be like when we all get there. And it's called, what that experience is called, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now you remember when you think about a wedding, everybody's paying attention to the bride around weddings. But when we get to heaven, the focus is going to be on the bridegroom who made all things possible for us to be able to be reunited with our God. Remember, the Bible is a love story of how God unites his people back to him. So you see in the book of Revelation, that reunion is going to be glorious and it's going to take place in heaven. There are some biblical terms that we do need to just highlight for your um, information and understanding. The one word is Babylon. A city symbolizes evil world systems that focus on temporal gains and worldly values. Hallelujah. Combination of two Hebrew words, hala and yah, which means Praise the Lord. Now you may have heard, hallelujah is the highest praise. Why don't you open your mouths now and just give the Lord a wonderful, wonderful praise in the form of hallelujah. The New Jerusalem is a city focused on heavenly and eternal values that please God. 
New Jerusalem, a city focused on heavenly and eternal values that please God. And so now the introduction. American broadcaster Paul Harvey was famous for closing his broadcast with his rest of the story segments. He saved them for the end of each broadcast. Intrigued listeners waited expectantly to learn what else there was to know about the main news story. In this segment, Paul Harvey would add some little known facts or data that related to his main topic of discussion. He would close by saying, and now you know the rest of the story. Similarly, Christian believers are intrigued and wonder about the rest of the story of God's plans for humankind. How and when will it end? What will be our personal destinies? How will we fare at the judgment seat? These are a few questions that naturally arise. Thankfully, the book of Revelation is available to us. It foretells the culmination of human history. And in today's lesson, we are allowed to see heaven's hallelujah chorus, praising God for victory. Hallelujahs guide the worship in Psalm 19, one through eight. Interestingly, hallelujah does not appear anywhere anywhere in the New Testament. However, it is used four times in these scriptures. Again, hallelujah is the highest praise. And so when we think about when we get to heaven, there is a response to the presence of God. And that is why the Bible says, come before his presence with singing. You have to know that he is God. He expects a response out of us when we enter into the temple and when we enter into his presence. So when we get to heaven, he's gonna re expect a response out of us. And that is the form of praise. So you will see that um, John the Revelator wrote about how loud and thunderous it's going to be. So when people react and respond to God now, that's just a foretaste of how it's going to be when we all get to heaven. So now telling the Bible story, this scene is rife and with metaphors and analogies, but it's rich illuminations of the final stages and destinies of humankind make it worth it make it worth diligent prayer and study. John reveals the fates of two cities, Babylon and the New Jerusalem. One is evil, the other is righteous. Also the fates of two women are revealed. One is the prostitute of Babylon and the other is the bride of Christ, which represents the church. So we are blessed to see very divergent destinies of two cities and two women. The Lamb, of course, is Jesus Christ. Babylon has been defeated. John hears loud voices from a great multitude. First, John witnesses the great multitude praising God. Next, he witnesses the 24 elders and the four living creatures worshiping God. Lastly, he witnesses all of heaven, including that great multitude, the four and 20 elders, four living creatures, and all of God's servants answering the call to praise God. And now the next section is the Hallelujah Chorus. The great multitude enters center stage singing hallelujah in loud voices. They praise God for his salvation, glory, power, truth, and justice as well as for his judgments against the Babylonian prostitute and avenging of his servants. The second hallelujah places emphasis on the first, like an encore. John tells us that the smoky smell of Babylon's destruction will be eternal. The four and 20 elders and the four living creatures worship is our next session section. The third hallelujah is heard and the membership in the hallelujah choir expands. Redeemed saints and angels worship together. 
In Handel's Messiah, people traditionally stand during the Hallelujah Chorus. Conversely, this heavenly chorus causes the hearers to fall down before the throne and worship God. Upon hearing the, the command of a loud voice, we see the progression of worship reminiscent of Revelation 5 and 13. All are praising together in agreement. The two additional reasons are given for praising God, his sovereignty and his plans for humankind's journey from earth to eternity, including the marriage of the lamb and his bride, the church. The final section is the fourth and final hallelujah. Hearing another loud voice, that sounded like a great multitude, John's attentiveness is heightened. Sound like pearls of thunder and roaring sounds like powerful waterfalls precede his final cry of hallelujah. This comes with a, a, the long-awaited wedding. This comes as the long-awaited wedding is about to take place. The two women, the prostitute of Babylon and the bride of Christ, are given vivid descriptions. The bride represents the church. There is no comparison. The lamb's bride must be without spot or wrinkle, according to Ephesians 5 and 27. The prostitute is wearing a lot of bling and gaudy accessories, but none of that impresses the lamb. The lamb's bride has made herself ready by working to prepare herself for the lamb's approval. Now, when you think of a bride in our um, societies, everybody is looking at that bride from head to toe. They're looking at that bride's veil. They're looking at her smile. They're even looking at her makeover. They're looking at her jewelry, all of how she's going to come down in all of her poise and splendor. Now, when you think about how splendorous and how amazing the brides prepare themselves for their earthly heaven, husbands, are you preparing yourself for Jesus Christ? When we think about the bride, which is the church, these are going to be individuals who have been made righteous by the blood of the Lamb. And what's so beautiful about this wedding feast is that the bridegroom made the bride pure. The bridegroom prepared the bride, and he's going to be reunited in heaven that great day. And so that's why we can just give the Lord a praise right there. And now we're moving to the Sankofa. No earthly event can possibly compare with the events in today's scripture, yet we can recall many victories in our lives that caused us to be to give wholehearted praises to God. To begin with, we can praise him for new mercies he gives us every day, morning and night. Juneteenth celebrations serve as reminders of a time for which all members of the African diaspora can praise God for past and present victories. Juneteenth is known by several celebratory names, including Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, Liberation Day, and Emancipation Day. It is celebrated annually on June 19th to commemorate the emancipation of enslaved people in the United States. It stems from a June 19th, 1865 message from the Union Army, which proclaimed freedom for all enslaved people in the state of Texas. Although, although President Abraham Lincoln had signed the Emancipation Proclamation for more than two and a half years earlier. The news did not reach people in Texas immediately. Historically, this delay had been explained as being due to existing delivery systems. Delivery of proclamations of this nature was contingent upon the human Union Army's advancement into slaveholding states. Texas at the time was the most remote state. Although the news was two and a half years late, we can only imagine the pure joy which 
slaves responded upon hearing the news. Many prayers had been prayed, many tragedies and hurts had been experienced, but God had finally moved. The slaves were free. Of course, many trials and tribulations still lay ahead, but the news of being free to praise God and worship led to great praise and worship. More than 150 years later, we rejoice and praise God for the same victory. Now we can say this, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And when the Lord has set us free from the chains of, of sin, that is a liberation and a freedom like no other. That is why there should be no hesitation or reservation in giving God praise. We're going to ask you to please read your case study in your private moments of devotion. We're going now to the section that is entitled Life Application. How do you understand how to act? when we get to heaven. John already gave us a glimpse of what it's going to be like. So why don't like, why don't we get our praise on now so we can know how to act when we get up there. So we're gonna now move to the life application. This is how one person has chosen to live. We don't have the same resources, but we have opportunities to serve and live as God intends us to live. We each have a, have to get ready for the judgment that John saw. How do we do that? How do we do it? Let's see what we can glean from the book of Revelation by examining the actions of the bride of Christ. The bride remains faithful despite evilness in a fallen world. She endures hardships while suffering, even at the risk of martyrdom. She trusts God, and she obeys God's command to take the good news of the gospel to every creature. How did she do it? She made herself ready. Likewise, it is up to us to make ourselves ready. Now there's a um, song that Sean Pace used to sing, I know I've been changed. And she talked about how can God allow a black soul to be dipped in red blood and come out whiter than snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can make us ready for that great day. So it's, it's, it's really up to us to make that decision. Are we going to be ready when Jesus comes? Because you cannot be getting ready when he comes. You got to be ready when the bridegroom comes. And so every day, every moment we wake up, God gives us another chance to fall upon our knees and ask him to make our heart his home. Will you do that today? So many times we come to Sunday school and go to church and there's no response. But we should not be wasting our time because the bride has to get ready for the bridegroom. So let us take that message to our loved ones and to the people who are connected to our lives. It is up to us to make ourselves ready. We have to get ready for the judgment that John saw. And we have time because we have life and we still have opportunities to make sure that we're in right standing with God. And the other part, what is so beautiful is that anybody can come, whosoever will let him come. John 3.16 caught that, which says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever is in that great number would be in that place to praise God. So we don't have to live in a fallen state of sin when the Lord God has given us a path to salvation. It's up to us to grab his hand and hold to his word and be ready when he comes. And now the questions. Does hallelujah 
have a new and special meaning for you? Hallelujah is the highest praise, but it cannot be locked into your lips. It has to come out of your mouth because that's what's going to happen in heaven when we get there. So we hope that it has a new meaning and a special meaning to you. Don't be ashamed to praise God because man did not wake you up. God did. Man did not make ways out of no way. Man is not going to give of of, of his son so we can have eternal life. God did. So that is why we should give God all the glory and honor and praise. Question number two, what impresses you most about the Hallelujah Chorus? It is a wonderful, wonderful song that gives God all the glory and all the honor. Question number three, what life changes are you led to make after looking closely at the bride of Christ? Now remember, the bride is not without any type of blemishes. The bride is pure and white. The bride doesn't have a bunch of spots. And, and even when you look at a bride's gown, that bride is keeping that gown as pure and beautiful because they want to present their best for the bridegroom. Don't you want to look your best for the bridegroom? It takes intentional decisions to make sure that we are looking right, living right, and being in a right standing as the bride of Christ, which is the church. We certainly hope you enjoyed our lesson today. We certainly hope you got something out of our lesson and we want you to just be reminded of the promises that God has for us. And so when you think about the passage that I made reference to, it is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life that is what heaven is about we're going to have everlasting life in heaven so we don't want any regrets we want to get our reward when we finish with this journey because this world is not our home as believers we have another home that we must be prepared for thank you so much for joining us today we are going to now ask you to please bow your heads for our closing prayer in the name of jesus we come to with thankful hearts we thank you for caring enough to have john record his revelations please bless us to heed them, not just read and discuss them, but to apply them in our daily lives. You are sovereign God. We thank you, we honor you, we bless your holy name, and we shout hallelujah in the name of Jesus, because you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and we give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now, you can come down and praise God with us in our in-person worship service. Or if you're unable to do that, stay in this virtual space because our morning worship will begin very shortly. Thank you once again for joining this church school moment. We hope you will enjoy the rest of your day and may the Lord God continue to bless you real good.